Welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm trying a whole bunch of new things today. <laughs> Anyone who watches regularly might notice that um, my background is a little bit different. I finally, not that you can see it, but I finally have green screen working. So I can do all sorts of interesting things. And I haven't really decided what I'm going to do yet, especially when it comes to this introduction part. And I can also see my hands look a bit weird. But anyway, this takes a little bit of tweaking over time. I'm also a bit washed out, but whatever. Um, I don't stay on this screen for very long, so it's okay. But welcome to Hands On, where every week I, Christian Schiller, try a piece of developer-focused technology and see how far I can get with it. Today, I'm going to try something a little bit more practical than just a kind of try something. I'm going to... Uh, try actually switching something that I use for a hobby project to a different service. And as the text would imply, I'm going to switch from Heroku to Vercel. Uh, we'll at least experiment with doing so. Whether I actually keep it as a permanent change remains to be seen how far I get, I suppose. If you like what you see, you can find more at christianchiller.com where you can also subscribe, say hi, leave a comment, etc, etc. Heroku is a kind of platform as a service, I guess is one thing you could call it. Um, running, I mean, in some respects these days you might call it serverless, but it's not really serverless. It's actually just, it was a way of quickly running uh, small applications and then scaling from there. And then in some respects it had a lot of its market taken away by things like Kubernetes, especially where you get to a larger scale. But for hobby projects, which is all I'm really using it for at the moment, it's perfect. Um, and I'll show you what I do with it in a minute. Let's have a look at Vercel. Vercel is somewhat similar. Um, and it does a lot of different things actually, but it kind of, I'm gonna look at the similar sort of aspect that I want to use it for. So the aspect of hosting a, a JavaScript function that gets called every now and then. So let's have a quick look at what I'm using on the Heroku for now. I have this weird project called Board Game Jerk. It does a bunch of different things actually, but the easiest one to look at here is, there is a Twitter box that every Wednesday, I've actually kind of almost forgotten about a little bit. It's been a little quiet, uh, tweets out a random tweet with a board game idea. And it also has a Twitter bot and a few other things as well. Um, but it works through a variety of different packages. There is an NPM package that actually creates the language. It uses a library called Tracery that pretty much just puts together a string, as you can see here, from a bunch of random words, which I have loaded into JSON files. Um, you can kind of see the idea here, a mechanic game that comes from this JSON file, where you are from this file, doing from this file with what in, etc, etc. Not always grammatically correct, as we could see in some of those examples, but you get the idea. And here's some of the JSON, which needs some updating. I, I kind of need to add to it every now and then. So this is effectively the NPM module. All it does is return this string. Then I have an API that uh, is currently on Heroku that basically uses express and that generator to wait for a request to be called here, just one endpoint, um, and returns the text as a response. Inside this bin is uh, how it works on Heroku. It's wrapped in a, in, a, in a bash file for running that code, pretty much. And you can also see in here, yeah, so that's uh, Heroku's proc file. And then the Twitter bot does something similar. It sends a request to that uh, endpoint, which is the same one we just looked at. And again, gets the response and then tweets it. And that on um, Heroku is set to run every seven days, basically. So that's kind of the pattern there. So we're gonna try and replace at least the API, I think, in this video. Let's look at getting this uh, API, I think, first and foremost. The NPM module is obviously on NPM. So let's look at getting this to Vercel. We will give it a slightly different name, I think, because that name is not very helpful. NPI, 
framework preset. There is no framework, which is already starting to bother me slightly. Maybe this is not what I'm looking for. We will hope that this is the right approach. <laughs> build and output settings. There isn't really a build per se. So it builds. It's deployed. Okay. Whoa. That's kind of hard to look at. Um, so here's the URL. So in theory, hmm. So I think we need to change something there. Probably just, could just try that. But I do get the feeling this is not necessarily what we're looking for. <laughs> Almost kind of a serverless function in some respects. Uh, it's serverless and designed for static front end and serverless functions. There is no running server. If you're trying to start a server, which I am, then you're likely to run into difficulties. Maybe we'll re-architect for the serverless functions instead. Okay, let's let's try that then. I've never really got into this um, this kind of world. To deploy serverless functions without any additional configuration, you can put files with extensions matching supported languages and exported functions in the API directory at a project's root. Okay. Oh, I think this should work. .js. Okay. I guess we can use express. I'm just wondering what needs to be returned. Standard response should be enough. I'm wondering if what we have already is, is actually enough. Or well, something errored. I mean, that's encouraging to see that it at least worked. <laughs> ah, okay. All right, we're getting somewhere. So it wants an older version of a node. Wouldn't mind taking a look at the GitHub repository. Okay. Kind of dubious. No, it's just the same thing again. So, <laughs> all right. I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean it didn't work because we have that uh, file twice. I'm just wondering how I sort of test it, I guess. Um, but I suppose we could test here. Um, let's install the Vercel CLI first. Um, let's just install that. Ah, so this is still running that same command. Okay, that's probably, oh, that worked. Now that's interesting. I think it's the dev command, so we should probably remove that and see what happens instead. So that's also, that's back to what it was before. It doesn't really look like we're testing the server list though. If you have an API directory like the above examples on this page, you can run the following command, but it doesn't. I actually wonder, now I come to think of it, has this actually happened? Maybe it, that, that gray text kind of implies to me that it happens by default, but maybe it doesn't. Installing dependencies. I don't know if that happened last time. Added packages, 99 packages. That's express, I suppose. Now we can actually see that it picked that up. I don't know if that happened last time. Oh, hang on, what's this? Functions. You know what? <laughs> I think there may be something not so clear. Let's see. No, error. <laughs> I, wonder, I don't really understand how we're supposed to call it. It's picked it up, but how do we, how do we call it? I guess. At the moment, with no better idea, there's no harm in just trying <laughs> a couple of things. Let's try that. No. Try four. Let's try that. Nope. Let's try that. I'm not sure. Like it, it's picked it up, <laughs> but I don't know what I'm supposed to call. Okay. Time to search the internet. I think I need to make it index.js. I mean, that's, that's fine. I uh, wish it said that, but again, it's picking that up. That's good. So in theory, just be this. No. Oh, there's actually a guide there. That's weird. Didn't come across that earlier. Oh, no, this is exactly what I have done here. Create a file, add it to the API. We had service function. Does this need to be changed maybe? Okay, that's fine. I don't mind. It's a fairly basic change. I 
don't have module exports in mind, but again, that's fine. How you put a subject to the root of your project. We don't have any static content, that's fine. We don't have anything else of this. Telling me it's not ideal, that's fine. This is such a simple application. I think it doesn't matter, but okay. Third time, well, third change lucky. Not quite third time lucky, but third change lucky. So I think as far as I can tell, we should just be able to call, nope, same again. <laughs> then I don't know, still the same thing. But actually that hasn't updated either. That is still the old code. I think I need to delete this, to be honest with you. I think that is potentially causing problems. I think it's overriding things. Building, so it's gonna be another new URL, it's fine. Kind of like double checking here. <laughs> I can see a 404 there now, which is different. Page cannot be found. See, that's interesting. That kind of shows that is not really working. Yes, right. You do need, okay, whew, we finally got there. So you do need the API path that is not specified. I think I'm going to maybe make a contribution to documentation for that and you get the response. So that took um, <laughs> quite a lot of time to not get very far, but it works. The only problem here is of course the URL changes each time. I'd have to look into how I can fix that. But um, for the website, for example, it's probably the easiest thing to change right now. I can just replace that URL, open that in, uh, sorry, a brave, just to be more sure. And that should, uh, something's, <laughs> something's a bit broken, uh, but there, there we go. The summary is that switching from Heroku to Vercel is not a kind of match to match. So actually it's somewhat comparable, but you have to rethink the way you do it. Whereas Heroku just lets you put a, quote unquote, traditional command, and um, you kind of, it just spins that up every time. Vercel is pinging, running it, bringing it, well, it's actually, uh, it is kind of comparable, I suppose. I don't know, they have different names, so I feel like they should be different, but they actually kind of sound the same the more I talk them through. But anyway, it wasn't a seamless tweak, but it works. Um, I'd have to now go through the rest of the setup and see if I can get that to work. So for example, the Twitter bot would also be serverless. The website would just be static HTML. That should be easy enough. And that's basically it. I have another project that's actually a React project that might've been a better one to try, to be honest with you, but done it now. Um, so I might keep chipping away and I might uh, make a, another part of this video with um, switching the other things. But that was the basics there and that worked. Um, I think it's slightly faster. I do know that when, uh, if you don't hit the Heroku endpoint for a while, it kind of goes to sleep and then it has to run up again, which gives you a few seconds delay. And I don't know if Vercel is faster. I might try that, let it sit for a bit and then go back and revisit and see what the delay is. But okay, once we figured out a few things that were a little bit missing in the docs there, it uh, came together in the end. So I would have liked to have got further, but at least we've got something working and I might add to this video later. We'll see how we go from there. And if you enjoyed what you saw, you can find more at christianchiller.com. And wherever you're watching, you can subscribe, say hi, leave a comment. That is always appreciated. I'll be back next week with another hands-on. And until then, thank you very much for joining me. Take care, everybody.